Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We begin with breaking news right now. Fans will be back in the stands at high school sports in Fargo and West Fargo schools starting December 14th. Both school districts confirmed to Valley News Live that a maximum of 50 home team spectators will be allowed at competitions and performances when those activities resume on December 14th. Right now, North Dakota is designated in the orange or high risk level, which means, according to the North Dakota Smart Research, crowd limitations are as followed. 50 fans are allowed for orange or high risk levels. 100 fans will be allowed for yellow or moderate risk level. 200 fans are allowed for green or low risk level and normal occupancy restrictions for blue or new normal. Officials do remind people, however, masks will be required for all fans, sideline and media personnel during those games. Media members wishing to cover are also encouraged to make sure there is a plan in place before the game starts. A Cullum, North Dakota teenager charged with sexually assaulting a young boy this summer has now pleaded guilty. 18-year-old Zachary Richardson is charged with one count of felony gross sexual imposition. Documents say Richardson's therapist said that Richardson would sexually offend young children if given the chance. Richardson's foster mom told officers she had taken away all of Richardson's electronics as he was regularly engaging in sexual and pornographic sites. He will be sentenced on March 18th. Protesters will soon be gathering on the NDSU campus. A protest is expected to start in about two hours in front of the Memorial Union. It's in response to a racist group Snapchat involving students and multiple incidents of alleged hate speech. A second protest takes place tomorrow afternoon outside of school president Dean Vershani's home. It was earlier this week when we heard about the racist group chat that spread like wildfire, but the school says it was brought to their attention a month ago. They say the students involved were punished and some apologized publicly. Prashani now says the school is investigating at least two more cases involving potential hate speech on campus. We're enjoying a nice Friday afternoon, a lot of sunshine out there too. What can we expect temperature wise? Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Well, good afternoon. It is beautiful out there for most of us getting to enjoy lots of sunshine and temperatures. There's a big range right now. Our warm spot in the southwest. That's where it's been all week. And we're at 44 degrees in Jamestown. Fargo's at 34. It's 38 in Grand Forks. But check out Bidette. Only 19 degrees right now. And here's why. We're looking at conditions that are a little more cloudy in that area. Some cooler air there right over Lake of the Woods in the Bidette region. The rest of us are seeing on our satellite map here, we are seeing lots of sunshine. A few clouds rolling southward in our western viewing area. And that sun angle is so low. You can actually see on this visible satellite map, you can see it making a shadow, uh, casting that shadow from south to north from those clouds. Pretty cool sight there, given uh, how low that sun angle is at this time of year. Here's a look at our hourly planner. We've got those blue skies, a little bit of a haze on the horizon there, and we'll continue to be sunny here as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures rising into a few more degrees into some more 30s and into some more 40s in southeastern North Dakota. And then we watch those numbers drop a bit as that sun goes down. Down. And tonight, a few more clouds moving in. We might even see a flake or two. So we'll let you know what to expect as we're heading into the weekend and beyond coming up in your forecast. Sounds great. Thank you, Lisa. There's still no cause after smoke blanketed much of the city of Elbert Lee, Minnesota, following a massive fire at an abandoned warehouse. Many city streets were blocked off and at least one family was evacuated from their home. People saw flames climbing from the homes and melting siding. There are no reports of injuries. Two U.S. Marshals were hurt and the fugitive was killed during a shootout in New York City today. Federal officials say the Marshals are expected to recover after the confrontation early this morning. Officials say 35-year-old Andre Sterling was killed. He had been wanted for shooting a trooper in the hand two weeks ago during a traffic stop. Officials say one deputy with a fugitive task force was hit in the leg and another was struck in the arm and leg. The U.S. reported more than 217,000 new coronavirus cases yesterday, shattering the previous record. Daily deaths are also climbing higher, with nearly 2,900 deaths nationwide yesterday alone. Adriana Diaz reports from Chicago. If we don't act now, 
Our hospital system will be overwhelmed. California Governor Gavin Newsom announced plans to impose the strictest lockdown orders his state has seen since March. After hospitalizations there jumped nearly 200 percent in the last month. We are announcing uh, and introducing a regional stay at home order in the state of California, fundamentally predicated on the need to stop gathering with people outside of your household. The order shutters salons and bars and limits restaurants to takeout and delivery only in regions of the state where ICUs reach 85% capacity. The governor expects most of the state to hit that threshold in the next few days. Help is on the way in the form of new vaccines, one of which was already approved in the UK. On the CBS News podcast, The Takeout, our Major Garrett asked Dr. Anthony Fauci why the UK approved Pfizer's vaccine first. I love the Brits. They're great. They're good scientists, but they just took the data from the Pfizer company and instead of scrutinizing it really, really carefully, they said, OK, let's approve it. That's it. Fauci later apologized, saying he has confidence in the UK's scientists and regulators. But a vaccine can't come soon enough. On Chicago's south side, the crush of new COVID patients has doctors and nurses at Roseland Community Hospital wondering how long they can hold on. I'm actually afraid that we're going to get overrun. Nurses like Alma Abad don't just treat COVID patients, she comforts them. In the ICU, she set up this iPad to connect 85-year-old Florence Bolton to her grandkids. We love you. It's that kind of separation that makes losing a loved one to this virus especially cruel, says Patrick Brent. He lost his 72-year-old mother, Janice Brent, to COVID just 10 days ago. I couldn't go to Chicago. I couldn't be with her. I couldn't, I couldn't hold her. I couldn't hug her. I couldn't even see her. And the last time I hugged her was, you know, a year ago. And she's gone. She's gone. And we have some developments on the Pfizer vaccine. According to the Wall Street Journal report, the company had to cut its production target for the end of the year in half because of issues with ingredient standards. The company says it made those revisions back in November and that the U.S. is still on track to receive its 20 million dose allotment by the end of the year. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Chicago. Pfizer says it still expects to roll out more than a billion doses worldwide in 2021. Today, Congress will consider whether to remove marijuana from the Federal Controlled Substances Act once and for all. The House of Representatives is set to vote today on the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, also known as the Moore Act. It would decriminalize cannabis and clear the way to erase nonviolent federal marijuana convictions. It would also create pathways for ownership opportunities in the emerging industry. Today's vote would mark the first time a full chamber of Congress has taken up the issue of federally decriminalizing cannabis. Coming up at noon, would you let your child volunteer for a vaccine that could possibly bring an end to this pandemic? See what some parents are saying in just a few minutes. But first, a check of that Friday forecast. Look at that beautiful, sunshiny sky. We'll find out what we can expect this afternoon and into the weekend with Lisa Green's forecast.